Time to confront this conceited poser about the supposed back door he set up that we found out about from that other conceited poser. Boss, we need to talk. Is something wrong? I'm not sure. Did you set up a private access route to bypass the company firewall right before you hired me? <laughs> I what? Pritchard said someone's been using it to access our system since before the first attack. The security measures he and I set in place never stopped them because we didn't even know the loophole existed. Ah, oh, I see. Frank's fixed that, though, right? He has now, but he's wondering why you never mentioned it. Frank's paranoid, Adam. You know that. Can a busy man forget things once in a while? You streamed an awful lot of data through that portal, boss. Right before you brought me on board, Preacher may be paranoid, but I gotta admit, I'm wondering what was in it too. Yeah, as an ex-cop, I guess you would. As a, the what? important thing is, you found the hole and plugged it. We're secure now. And the information you uncovered in that FEMA facility may actually help us track these guys. So let's just stay focused on what's important. Okay, okay, right. So this guy... This guy is a company set up here. He's got, you know, spent a lot of money on security. Um, makes a back door, streams data through it. We find out about it and confront him. And he says, oh, of course you're worried about it. That's because you used to be a cop and cops do that kind of thing. Like, anyone, anyone in the right mind who found out about that, that the boss had set up a data leak, set up a back door to the system that... Adam... Are we done here? Not quite. The, their boss had set up a back door that was exploited by um, mercenaries who came in and killed everyone. And he thinks, he thinks, oh, we're only looking at this because we're a cop and that's what we do, we investigate things. This guy's a loony. He's an absolute loony. Listen to what he said at the start. Boss, did you set up a back door? Blah blah blah. He goes, did I what? Did, did what? Did what, Adam? I don't know anything about so, that. I guess we understand each other. Now. Oh, I understand you fully, sad of me. Understand you fully. Let's read. This guy is aggressive, excitable, and envious. He's envious, man. This guy has everything. Has a tendency to shift blame onto others, but will back down rapidly if resistance is felt. Huh. Back down rapidly. Huh. He's trying to blame Pritchard for being paranoid. He's trying to blame us for being, um, a snooping. So, I guess we understand each other now. I'm figuring you out. He's not afraid to use his authority to get his weight and doesn't like to be defied yet. Not afraid to use his authority. I'm the boss, mate. Back down or you're not gonna have a job tomorrow. Sometimes try to change the subject in order to win an argument. Yeah, he's trying to do that now, isn't he? Okay, all right, let's see. Let's see. Bl shifting the blame onto others, he's trying to change the subject. He will back down if resistance is felt. All right, so what do we say? So, I guess we understand each other now. Come on. Placate, of course you're right, and maybe Pritchard paranoia is rubbing off on me. It's just that the timing seems so strange right before you hired me. And he thinks it might be more than a coincidence. You went behind my back on this one, boss, with all due respect. You hired me to keep this place secure, but I can't do that if you're not 100% straight with me. Want to believe me, I want to catch these guys as badly as you do, but that breach is responsible for every security crisis we've had, including today's. If you want me to stop these guys, I need to know what kind of data they've put so, through. I guess we understand each other. Oh here. man, nothing stands out here. Nothing stands out. He doesn't like to be defied. We need to refocus to stop him changing the subject. Doesn't like to be defied. Well, none of these are really defying him, are they? He will back down if he meets resistance. 
No, let's refocus. I want to, believe me. I want to catch these guys as badly as you do. But that breach is responsible for every security crisis we've had, including today's. If you want me to stop these guys, I need to know what kind of data they've had access to. You're right, you're right. I'm sorry if I seem evasive. But you can't expect me to tell you every detail of this company's operations every single day. Wow. We're at war here. <laughs> and it's your job to protect us from enemies who try to take us down. You should have found that loophole without my having to tell you about it. Yeah, look at that. You know, Frank wanted me to hire experts, an outside security firm to protect us, but you convinced me you could do it. Oh, look at this. Are you saying you were wrong? <laughs> yeah, look, he's trying to blame us now, isn't he? What a, what a creep, man. You are a prick, mate. An absolute prick. Oh, I can't tell you about all the company's operations every day. This is a pretty big one. This is a pretty big one to leave out. He's trying, he's trying to blame, he's trying to blame us. He's trying to blame us about this now, isn't he? I think I proved myself today and the only reason I'm worried about the loophole right now is because the data you streamed through it could have been accessed, back traced and stolen by the men who attacked us. Our enemies Adam, might... Are we done here? Come on. Our enemies might still find a way to hurt us. Nah. We're getting sidetracked here. If you want me to win this war for you, I need to know how badly we've been compromised. Whoa, don't get me wrong, boss. I'm not questioning your leadership. I'm just concerned that your stream might have been compromised. Access by the hacker who attacked us. If so, how do you suggest I handle it? Oh, he doesn't like to be defied. But you will back down. Look, he's look, he's trying to shift the blame onto us, but you will back down if he so, feels resistance. I guess we understand each other now. We need to give him some resistance, so we're not placating. No, he needs resistance. I think I proved myself today. And the only reason I'm worried about that loophole right now is because the data you streamed through it could have been accessed, backtraced, and stolen by the men who attacked us. Our enemies might still find a way to hurt us with it. What? Well, I never considered that. I'm sorry, son. I guess you have proved yourself today. Your concerns about the data being compromised won't really be an issue as long as we stay strong and work together as a team. That's all I've ever tried to do here. Find the best, most qualified people I can and bring them all together so they can complement each other. Now, Megan understood that. That's why she suggested I hire you in the first place. To help this little family of ours survive. Yeah, we did it. We did it. Um, yeah, look at that. He backed right down as soon as he met resistance. Okay. Force the character into giving you what you want. I don't know if I like this part, but let's try it. Um, the last, the last thing we saw was um, this was this flash up three reds for Alpha. So let's let's try that. Boss, I really don't understand why you're giving me the runaround. When you hired me, I said I'd give you the best I could, but I can't protect us if you keep hamstringing my every move. If you won't level with me and tell me what it is you're hiding, then I'm out of here. I quit. Whoa. Adam, 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 wait. You can't leave us. We need you. Now more than ever. All right. Yes. Look, the truth is, I set up a confidential data channel for a private investigator, someone who can run covert background checks on people, potential new recruits like you. You what? I had to, Adam. You were a liability, remember? You'd just been fired from SWAT. Now, Megan believed in you, but I had to be sure. Look, I don't want this to come between us. I'll send the files to your computer. You can see for yourself what he dug up. But Adam, you'd better be sure. Why? What do you mean? I mean, sometimes the past should stay in the past. Once you see that data, you can't unring the bell. When you're ready, come back and talk to me. 
We need to discuss our next move. Huh. What could be on that data? Um, I'm not sure I like that um, pheromones thing to convince them because there's no real skill in it. You just look at what you just look at what flashes up in the alpha, beta, omega thing and then just pick the option that corresponds to that. There's no it's not like when we read a psychological profile and we have to argue with him and think about what he's trying to do and think what the best counter would be. You just It's just watching it's just watching what what lights up and picking the the one that corresponds? I don't really don't really like that system. Um, fine. He's going to send it to our computer, so I guess we should read that before we talk to him again. So, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Taggart's gone. Good. Right, Athene. Sorry, Adam. I can't help you right now. I'm trying to deal with the fallout from the Taggart meeting. Yeah, Fallout. That was a good game, man. Very good game. Right. Oh, boy. Yeah. Sarif is, um... You think he's genuine? He says he just, just wants the best in people. I get what he's saying. He has to run covert background checks. I mean, that's part of any company really... I mean, I doubt there's many companies today that don't at least check someone's social media page before they hire someone. Um, that seems fine, but why Why would he need to open up a back door to the system? And, like, did he just forget about it? Was he being... Was he being truthful when he said he just forgot that he left that back door open? That can't be right. He said it's been open for a year. Do you think this private investigator's in on this? Do you think that private investigator has kept the data loop open? I think he's part of the team. Where are we? There. Right, what do we have? David Saad of Confidential, right. Two frenet frantic. Frantic pony? What does that mean, frantic? Right, from Brent Radford, I guess he's the uh, private investigator. Paternity test, whoa. Uh, so he says to Sarif, I had a friend at the G Geneview Labs run the test off the records like you asked. Does your subject know that neither of his parents are his birth parents? That surprised me. The mother was sterile according to those old medical records I dug up, but his dad carries no comment phenotypes either. Okay. Oh, should Sarif have told us that? How do you how do you tell someone that their their parents weren't their real parents? How do you tell someone that? So her mother was Margie Jensen, uh 80572 Father was Arthur. Adam Jensen, 93. <sighs> Possibility of parentage, zero. Wow. 3rd of September. Oh no, this is America, isn't it? So it's 9th of March, 93. Adam is uh, 10 years older. Sorry, 10 years younger. 10 years younger than me. Whoa, 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 what's going on here? What's going on here? Two. Frenetic Pony from Brent. Two Brent from Lukash. Ah, right. So, Brent Brent has received this mail from Lukash, Lu, Lu, Lucius Marco. He's forwarded us to, forwarded it, forwarded it to us. Brent, it wasn't easy, but I finally back traced some of Margie and J Arthur's past. Through the medical files, mate, Arthur Jensen had enough connections through his old Desert Storm buddies turned security consultants to have certain records pulled, which is why the family is a ghost, but you couldn't hide Margie's records. Whoa, why would they? So Adam, Arthur, Arthur was in Desert Storm. 
which was, oh, I don't remember the exact date, around about 1990, something like that. Um, yeah, uh, so if he was, Jensen was, Adam was born in 93, uh, I think, I think I'm pretty sure the Gulf War was over by 93, I don't really remember. Um, I, the Gulf War definitely happened before 92 because I remember where I was when it happened. Remember what house I was living in. Uh, what I'm trying to think is, could Arthur have been away? You know, would have been away uh, in the field. You know, run about the time Margie was supposed to have uh, conceived Adam. What is, is what I'm saying? Is it is it really obvious? But it's not like we need to prove that he was away when she when 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 Adam was conceived because we know that Margie wasn't his mother. So for a period of eight years, Arthur relied on the insurance policy of his then employer, White Helix Labs, to pay for his wife's medication. She was on antidepressants since fourteen and needed regular prescriptions. When White Helix Labs burned down, all its files and employment records were lost, and the Jensen stayed invisible mostly. When White Helix Labs burnt down all its files and employment records were lost. Arthur was employed by White Helix Labs. She got regular prescriptions from that company and the place mysteriously burnt down and all those records were lost. Yeah, who burnt it down? Here's the thing, one minute Adam doesn't exist, and the next thing the Jensens have themselves a bouncing and healthy five-year-old. That's why they that's when they pull their vanishing act. So on a hunch, I sniffed around some more, and sure enough, the Jensens had tried adopting kids from several Michigan agencies, but Margie was deemed unfit as a parent. Is that because of her mental illness? I would guess so. Next thing you know, they have Adam. There's no real trail saying how he was placed in their hands. Hope that helps, Lucius. The next thing you know, they have a bouncing and healthy five-year-old, so that would be 98, right? Uh, so that's well after, that's well after uh, Gulf War. Yeah, so they've been turned down by every agency. Every Michigan agency. So someone has... So where did they get Adam from then? Uh, right, Mr. Saref, this is from Brent Radford, Jensen's psych evaluation. I found Adam Jensen's psych evaluation following that SWAT incident with the augmented teen. I managed to sneak a look at the folder, but I couldn't copy it. At least not yet. I'll be honest with you, the psych eval doesn't paint a pretty picture. It mentions the problems with authority figures, a disregard for the chain of command, anger management issues. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh, that's us and potential PTSD. Here's the thing, when you hired me, you said you wanted me to read between the lines, so here it is. The evaluation reads like fiction. I'm thinking a pissed off superior wanted Jensen off the force and had the evaluation worded to read like that just cause. But most of the rank and file I spoke to respected and liked Jensen. They thought he was a real straight shooter even though the SWAT incident soured his reputation a little. Still, even my source liked him enough to want to keep his psych eval buried. Brent. Someone wanted us off the force, probably um... Was it Captain... Captain Price? He doesn't... he wants people who are... He wants people he can uh, manipulate and control. And if we're a real straight shooter, we're not going to be uh, interested in his sneaky shenanigans, are we? Yeah, we saw these. We saw these. Okay. Okay, interesting. Interesting. So we are adopted. That's, uh, you know, that can't Athena be... Tells me Whoa! Spoke to Sarah. Did he happen to tell you why he made us look like idiots? I'm handling it. You can imagine how relieved I am to hear that. I'll tell you what. While you follow any lead Sarif Spoon feeds you, I'm going to do what I should have done in the first place and backtrace that signal. That's your pride talking. Still, 
Get back to me if you find something. You meant when? Pretty sure I didn't. <laughs> Pritchard's an asshole, but I don't know. I, I like him. I like him. He's, uh... He's... He's certainly not... He's certainly not a Sarif. Um... He's not a sort of fanboy, is he? He's he's a free, independent thinker, uh, willing to go against his employer for the greater good. Um, I I starting to like Pritchard. Um, at least, you know, I hate his personality, but I think he's, I think he's, I think he seems like a a, a bit of a bro. He seems reliable. He seems like someone we could trust. Uh, he did tell us about the back door. He's telling us he's working on it. I th what are you up to? You all right? You stretching your shoulder, yeah? Sorry, Adam. I can't help you. Well, right that's now. fine. I'm trying to deal with the fallout from the Taggart meeting. That's fine. Richard's going to backtrace the signal. Should he not have already done that? All right. Let's go and see what he's got to say. Here, this is for you. It's a corporate passport encoded with your biometrics. I've set up a false flag routing which should get you to Henshaw Island without any problems. You're sending me to China? What about FEMA? FEMA's got nothing to do with this, trust me. We'll have better luck in China. How can you say that? I saw the bastard who killed Megan pulling his men out of that facility. I left one of those men dead in its underground storage bay. I know that, Adam. Frank was monitoring the whole thing. So I also know that before he died, that man gave you an address in China. I want you to check it out. That doesn't make any sense. Look, Adam. There's a reason this company's under attack. You think it has to do with the typhoon or with some other top secret military project that I haven't told you about? The thought had crossed my mind. Yeah, well, it doesn't. The work Megan's team was doing before they were killed, it was redefining what it means to be human. This company, Seraph Industries, was about to lead mankind to its next stage in human development, self-controlled evolution. Can't you see how scary that can be to some people? Sure. I also see how lucrative it can be for some others. It's never been about money for me, Adam. But you're right. There are people out there who don't exactly feel the same. Like who? I'm hoping you'll be able to find that answer for us in China. So get going. Farida's prepping the chopper. Okay. So they were monitoring the whole thing. They were monitoring us in Highland Park. Um, and no one said what a good job we did at stealthing through nearly the whole thing. Or at least nearly, nearly stealthing through the whole first part. Almost. I can't believe it. can't believe it. I feel so undervalued as a team member here. <sighs> That's just life. That's just life. Now he, uh, he wants us to go to China to follow up the lead from uh, Barrett. Now what's kind of strange is that um, Jensen Jensen was surprised that Sarif says FEMA's got nothing to do with this. Like we we know FEMA's FEMA are involved in some way, but we know FEMA aren't the people behind this because. Uh, you know, otherwise they would they wouldn't be so um, uh, they wouldn't be so against these mercs taking over their uh, their their facility. You know, they're really hesitant to have the, the the mercs in there. So we shouldn't really have been surprised to hear that FEMA's not behind this. You have your orders, Adam. Meet Farida at the helipad as soon as you're ready to leave. Right. Well, let's uh let's go find Malik then. Right. Hey, Jensen. The boss said you were on your way. You're gonna love Hangsha. You've been there? Used to live there. I spent three, maybe four years working in the upper city. And most of my nights having fun in the lower one. You ready to go? Wow. Cool. Um, yeah. I kinda wanna hear more about this lower city. Unfinished side quest will be cancelled if you leave. Are you sure you want to Not go yet. now? I've got some things to finish up before we go. Don't take too long. I'm itching to brush up on my Chinese. Yeah, there's nothing we can do about this side quest though, is there? 
Richard found a cryptic note stapled to my office door. Uh, well, we did go and check that out, and he was dead, so... Yeah, well, we can't finish that one. Oh, well. Ready to head to China now? Yeah. I thought I was. How long is this going to take, Malik? You mean the flight or the fun afterward? Oh. Don't worry. We'll be there before you know it. Climb in. into another trap. It's the kind of thing I'd do to an enemy. You want my advice? Just find out who lives there and get out. Yeah, wow. So that's what she meant by Lower City. I thought it would just be like a... You know, maybe like a, a city on a hill. You know, having the... Um, you know, the businesses and the, you know, on top of the hill and the, uh, you know, nightclubs and whatnot, you know, at the bottom of the hill. But no, it's actually, jeez, man, look at that. That is some marvel of engineering, because how much weight must be on that structure? And all those buildings on it, man, that is insane. Jeez, look at this place. Jeez, look at this. Whoa. So this is China. It's just missing something, so isn't it? There's something missing. Wow, even the even the weeds are gorgeous. Look at this place. Yeah, so Ma Malik thinks uh Malik thinks Barrett might be setting us up. And that is a good thing to be paranoid about. Hong Hua Is that a euphemism? Seriously going to get herself into trouble one of these days. If that were the case, she'd already be in trouble. Between you and me, I'm starting to think Chan's afraid of her. Hello, sir. We are on break. But if you would like to talk to one of the girls on duty, just head downstairs. <clears throat> uh, let's get back to business. I believe there's a book up here to read. Tomorrow is green. A blueprint for saving the earth. The plain truth of this the plain truth of the the plain truth of it is this. We as a species have brutally abused our mother world, and now only we as a species in concert can heal it once more. How do we accomplish this? There are many ways, and they start with each and every one of us from taking individual responsibility to reduce one's carbon footprint through to larger and more proactive projects requiring dynamic cross-national cooperation such as close orbit mirrors orbital micro satellite mirrors capable of deflecting sunlight wow green tech energy solutions such as solar power cells wind farms wave power iron seeding stimulating ocean plankton to consume carbon 
Ah, okay. Cloud ships. Mobile wind-powered vessels capable of turning seawater into white counter-solar clouds. Ah, via weather modification. Okay. Synthetic trees. Nature imit imitative carbon capture technologies. The deep ocean water displacement. Piping systems to draw water from the ocean depths up to simulate the Earth's capacity up to stimulate the Earth's capacity for self-healing. Wow. Yeah. That's that first paragraph, man. The plain truth of it. Yeah. Uh, if you if you look at uh, if you look at the the uh, the evolutionary tree, if you look at the history of life on this planet, it's something. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what the actual percentage is, but it's something insane. Something insane, like... Like, 99% of every species that has ever lived is now extinct. We are, uh... Very lucky... to have made it this far. Not just us, but the other species that we share the Earth with. We're all very, very lucky to have made it this far. Because a lot of other uh, species did not. And in all these extinction events, you know, uh, talking about the, the massive extinction events. You know, the one that uh, ended, uh, what was it? The... Uh, which was the last of the Creatius? Was that the last, last period, the last uh, period period of the dinosaurs? Massive extinction events. Uh, we we are the only species to um, be extincting ourselves. The Bell Tower Way Company history. In the 1990s, decorated officer Roger St. John Foulkes left the British Army and became a strategic consultant for a UK-based private military contractor. What he learned there encouraged him to strike out on his own. Calling in favours from contracts gleaned from years in the Army, St. John Foulkes set up Bell Tower UK, precursor to the Bell Tower Group PLC. His personal eth ethos informed everything about the company's operations corporate policy and Bell Tower became known for its refusal to engage in any contracts of an ethically challenged nature. Okay. At first Bell Tower operated in minor conflict hotspots handling low level corporate security, kidnap and retrieval and close protection details. By the early 2000s the company had expanded its operations and grown into Bell Tower Associates, an umbrella entity Bell Tower Group now included subdivisions such as Bell Tower Maritime Security, Bell Tower Alpha, Hack Wall Data Protection Services, and Sky Secure Aviation. It seems like they're a company that can be trusted, whoever this Bell Tower is. Alright. Well, um Let's let's get out and explore. Let's see what um let's see what uh What's the name of the city, man? What is the name of the city? Uh, Hangshaw. Is it Hangshaw? Is this Hangshaw Gardens? Or is that just the general area of the street? Lower Hang Hangshaw. Wow. Look at that. This is a Yuzhou district. The Honghua Hotel, that's where we are now, okay. There's a lot to see here, man. There is a lot to see. Ooh, a limb clinic. We can uh, buy some more practice kits and never use them. Oh boy. Right, let's get out and explore.